Hey everyone, Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. So we're gonna go over a little bit of financial reporting here. So created a few videos on this, but uh, I, I think, and this is, I mean, almost like a couple of years ago now. So it's it's time for a bit of an update. Um, and I wanna sh again show you how to create these customized tables. And this technique is as relevant today as it ever was. Um, the um, uh, way that you can customize how you actually showcase your tables inside of Power BI gives you immen immense flexibility around how you want to um, create any number of reporting applications inside of Power BI. In this particular case, we're just talking about financial reporting, but this could be used in any type of reporting, right? If you wanna like actually totally customize what is shown in a table. Now, many of you who've utilized tables in Power BI may not have, uh, have, have very likely, sorry, come across the situation where you might wanna show different results on, on different rows um, and maybe like summary calculations on a particular row, uh, just do some sort of customization and it's not actually really possible. It's not possible to create some sort of subtotal uh, within your calculations in a normal table. There are actually some um, new uh, like customized visuals that enable some of this, but still I don't feel they give you as much flexibility as if you utilize this technique inside of Power BI. So the whole idea behind these customized tables is that you need a table template, okay? So this is like a, a bigger model that um, has been de I've developed um, personally in the past, but what I wanna show you is this, is that you need to create a template of how you want your table to look, okay? So it's like a, um, another sort of term for it is like it's a supporting table. It doesn't, this, this particular table is not going to be part of your model per se, but it's going to be part of, um, it's going to be part of your, uh, it's gonna support the calculations. It's gonna support the calculations, sorry, of what you're doing inside of your core model. So if I just sort of branch out from here, you'll see that there's a whole range of, so this is my core model inside of here, and there's a whole range of supporting tables down the bottom here, okay? So what we need to do is utilize this template. And so I'll just show you what this looks like here. Right, and if we come down here, um, you'll see that these are all the totals. Now what I can do here is you see here that if I actually um, sort these properly, right, you'll see how this then looks. So this particular column here, and this was all just set up in Excel um, with just putting tab, doing tabs or, or spaces so that these these were out further than where the, the sort of subtotals were. So I could have this sort of indexing in my table. Okay, so this is absolutely key. I've also created this normalized columns just to help me with, with my calculations. But the key here is just creating a template like this. Okay, it really, really is, is the only way to do this. Uh, and then what we need to do, uh, the next step for us, is we need to create a formula which works out what row we are in and allocates a result to that particular row. Right, because remember the biggest, the, the most, the main concept inside of um, the DAX formula language, and just generally, generally with Power BI, is this concept of context, right? And the context comes when we place into a t this into a table. It comes from the row, and so if this is just some randomized supporting table with these random text values with no relationship to our model, we need to um, allocate. We need to go and ca uh, get the results from somewhere and allocate them to these particular text values based on some sort of logic, okay? And that's how we can really allocate anything to any row because we're just creating the logic ourselves within measures, okay? So let's come back here and you'll see that I've um, I've added that template here to this table, okay? And to make sure it's actually sorted correctly, you'll see here that I've got a little hidden row, a uh, hidden column, sorry, called the row, the row index. I've dragged that in as well, just to make sure that this is always sorted correctly. And then what I've done is I've I've said, okay, well, let's go and work out all of these individual subtotals first, like what I want total revenues to show, what I want total cost of goods sold to show. And that's where I need to create a few different calculations here. Okay, so let's try to find those inside of here. So you see that there's there's quite a lot of measures here, but these none of these measures are actually, like some of these initial measures aren't, aren't really that complex. Like if I go revenues here, like it's literally just grabbing um, the uh, values um, that have in my 
um, in my data set that have revenues tied to it. So in my data set, I've got um, a, a sort of more simplified table with all of the financial metrics in it. So let's just let's just have a quick look at that. So you obviously I've got a, t a table here of all of my my different metrics. So that's a, a table which is easy for me to run calculations over. And now I'm going to extract the information I want out of here and then allocate it to where I need it to go inside of my table. Okay, so I've got revenues, my revenue calculation here. Let's have a look, cost of goods sold is going to be pretty similar, right? Cost of goods sold and I've added a minus to it so that it is actually a minus value because in the raw data it wasn't. And then all, the, all these other ones like total gross profit. Let's have a look. Um, gross profit here is, um, well, gross profit is literally just revenue minus cost, right? So um, I can, uh, in this particular case, I could have I could have just used the values I did there, but I, I added them inside of variables just to break it out a little bit more. And then also I've done the gross profit um, percent. Let's see here, gross profit margin. And that's how I get these results. And then I've also done the same for the previous year, previous year actuals as well. Okay, so I've been able to isolate those particular results too. Okay, so now that I've got those individual results, well, what I've got to do uh, though is I've got all of these other results here that I need to allocate to. Now, I didn't want to have to create a formula that did all of these individual ones, but what I was able to do is in my in my like table in my model, like a lot of these main, um, like a lot of these row items, like a lot of these items were actually in my data set, right? The, the things that went in my data set were the roll-ups, like the total revenue, the total cost of goods sold, the total gr gross profit, etc. But all of these individual items were in my data set. So if we have a look down here, you'll see that all of these different items actually exist in my data set. So, there's, so I don't need to, in this particular case, like how I've set this up, I don't need to um, isolate and calculate measures for every single item here because we can allocate these all at once and only um, do and only do the sub categories or the subtotals where appropriate like to those roll up calculations okay so this is how we do it let's let's have a look at um, how we did especially this one here so selected year actuals okay um, where, uh, let me just fire this one New amounts here okay cool so this is this is the this is like the core thing that I want to show you and this is the most important thing for um, complete customization of your tables, like being able to really overlay results into your templates. Okay, so what we do here, and this is the, this this is a sort the sort of a sort of methodology that can be used reused in anything. Okay, so so really tune in if this is going to be important to what you're trying to create. Now we've got here, um, we need to work out. Okay, within this variable, I'm going to work out what row are we on. Okay. And all I'm going to do is whenever I'm on a particular row, I'm going to figure out, okay, what is within this particular row? Like what is the context here? And what I've done is I've gone and used that normalized column, remember, in, in the template so that I always actually, you know, I, I don't create, I don't grab a value which has, which has spaces in it or anything like that. I'm actually just grabbing the core value. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use switch true to run a whole lot of logic. Okay. So if, and all switch true is, is like a nested if statement. Uh, and it's a, just a better way to write sort of more advanced logic inside of Power BI. And I'm going to say, okay, well, if the current item equals to total revenues, so if it equals to total revenues, I want it to be that revenues result that I calculated. If it equals cost of goods sold, I want it to be the cost of goods sold result, gross profit result, profit margin result, so on and so forth, right? And what I'm able to do is then allocate these roll-up calculations to those subtotals. Then what I've done at the end here, I've said, if the um, if it's not any one of these go and look up that exact row in the table in the income statement table and then return to me that result okay go and go and calculate up that particular result and this actuals is, is really just it's just it's almost like a sum it's like a sum but with a little bit of additional logic breaking out revenues and expenses and making sure they're plus and minuses etc Okay, so I've allocated the subtotals and then I've created the final logic which just which gives me all of the other results. So I didn't have to go and create a hundred different allocations here. I was I only had to do it for the few that really mattered. And then what I've done for I've actually done exactly the same for um, I've actually done the same for the last year results as well. 
um, somewhere down here, and also I've done it for the um, the percentage results. But what you what you've got here is uh, this is just sort of like a master calculation where I've um, uh, I've done a few of these all at the same time, and um, uh, that has enabled me to allocate them into 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 the t into the table all at once, right? So, okay, so I want to stop there. That was all I wanted to show. Like, that was the key thing I wanted to show was this the template and then this allocation methodology. So there's like a few steps there. There's making the template, getting that as you want, then figuring out what your roll-up totals are, getting those results individually, and then creating the allocation algorithm, basically. So where you are going through logic, like step-by-step, step, saying if it's this, I want it to equal this. If it's this, I want it to equal this. If it's not any of those, then I want it to equal to this 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 particular result. And that just saves you time from having to write out so much additional uh, additional logic. So if you just think about it clearly, uh, it can um, it can easily be done and easily replicated in many different scenarios. Okay, that's all I want to show. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, just remember that we also have a complete course uh, within within Enterprise DNA's Learning Center uh, around financial reporting. So this is a really comprehensive course, uh, course going into all aspects of financial reporting. It's part of our membership, it's part of our center of excellence. So if you want to jump on board that, you, you, you definitely can. Uh, and um, you will learn how to build a complete solution from start to finish around financial reporting um, if you actually work through this course. So definitely check that out. I'll make sure it is linked below. Okay, take care, all the best, talk to you soon. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.